sequencing strategies, we still don't have much data on what will happen, um, you know, for a patient that has been exposed only to venetoclax. Can they be salvaged by ibrutinib or idelalizib? We don't have any data on that. Um, the other um, issue is combination strategies. Once you use two good drugs frontline, let's say you use um, venetoclax with ibrutinib, how do you salvage those patients? Will they respond to a PEI3K delta inhibitor? Will they respond to CAR T? So we know that chemotherapy is now no longer widely used based on all these recent studies. Um, but the problem is what do we salvage these patients with if they become refractory to um, these novel agents? What would be the best therapy to use? That's one of the challenges. The other challenge is that as of right now, tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as ibrutinib or idelalizib are supposed to be used all the way until you develop a toxicity or progression of disease, which wouldn't really matter if you are in your 70s or 80s, but if you are in your 40s and you consider the prospect of being on a drug for the next um, you know, couple of decades, it, it, it just, it has a lot of potential toxicities that can come, you know, like hypertension, arrhythmias, arthritis, many other things that can happen over time. So um, we're trying to develop strategies for young fit patients so that they don't have to be exposed to a drug continuously, and hence the combination studies that are now on accruing trials.